Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about the new series which is starting on YouTube which is called CISO Masterclass and in this masterclass I'm going to cover the first class about introduction of CISOs and different roles and options and mapping of CISOs in the organization. Uh, after receiving a lot of love and respect on my certification prep and interview prep, I thought this is something is a major area people are looking for a content. So let me build a content around CISO and this is, will be the 18 modules which I'm preparing uh, to make a better CISO. I can assure you one thing, this is this videos are completely different from what you have seen either on YouTube or paid videos. In this video, I'm bringing my experience, I'm bringing the actual role of CISO, or VCISO, what they do in the organization from building social media profile and how to execute projects, risk management, security architect. So I need your motivation here. I need your support. Uh, I need your suggestion in a, in a comment box. Shall I continue this particular series and do let me know after watching this video, how do you find this particular session? If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so let's start with the first part. So when we're talking about CISO, CISO is a senior executive responsible for developing and implementing organization information security strategy to protect its data and system from cyber attack. That is the general definition of a CISO. And if you basically see the hierarchy, the hierarchy is like we have a first board. The first we basically appoint the board. The board is basically appoint the senior management and senior management is basically uh, appoint uh, CEO. Then CEO is basically appoint the CIO. The CIO basically appoint the CISO. And CISO is the one who basically execute the information security function. So if you talk about the overall hierarchy, the CISO is the one who create an information security charter, which talk about what is the role of information security in the organization. It cover your roles and everything. Based on the information security charter, we basically create an information security strategy. Strategy is your five year. Then based on information security strategy, we basically create an information security program, which include all the function. We're going to discuss this all in detail. Okay. But, uh, we also going to discuss about myth and uh, fact about CISO also. So that's something is basically part of my next slide, but it is just for reference. I said, this is how the hierarchy basically works. Now, when you're talking about the mapping, Okay, so is a CISO is only responsible or solely responsible for organization security? The answer is basically no. CISO is the one who lead the security efforts. Security is a shared responsibility. Everyone in the organization responsible for security, but CISO is the one who responsible or you can say accountable for implementing a security function. If you ask me that, okay, overall, who is accountable for security? Then answer is board because that is the information we convey to the a market or convey to the PR, convey to the citizens and all that. So CISO is not only the person who is responsible for security. So is the CISO role is purely technical? Uh, I was surprised because, um, you know, I have seen a lot of job openings which say, okay, the person must be AppSec, person must be OACP, person must be do pen testing and they're looking for a profile called CISO. And that, that myth, that, that perspective created in the market, okay, the CISO is basically a technical person, which is not true. See, when we're talking about CISO as a role, okay, uh, I'm going to discuss that in detail in the later stage. Normally, when you talk about CISO, okay, we have a different perspective of CISO. One is called as a planner. So one role of a CISO is a basically planner. Okay. One is basically the role of a implementer or you can say executor. Okay. And third is basically called as a organize or you can say optimize, organized or optimized. So let's say example, I join uh, as a CISO in my organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start something completely from the scratch. I will basically have a meeting with the customer. I will build the program. I will implement the strategy. So, you know, I will mainly focus on the IT. I will mainly focus on the building capabilities, you know, so th that role is more like a 
planner okay now i join one company the program is already there okay so i will basically act like a executor okay where i will execute the things i will do the risk assessment i will execute the multiple projects okay so that is basically part of a implementer and then third is strategy is there policy is there everything is working fine you need to optimize and all that so ciso sometimes join as optimizer there or the one who basically try to improve the functions so they already have they want to improve they have already risk man they want to improve okay they want to build more better practices so that is how the perspective is there so ciso role is not only pure technical in nature it basically has a multiple role so we going to discuss that in a detail so ciso role is a blend of technical expertise and strategic leadership and it required the understanding of business operations risk management regulatory compliance see one thing you need to understand the role of a ciso if you ask me the role of a ciso in the organization is that he explain to the board and the senior management why security is important please understand this he basically demonstrate how security can create a value for the board i'm sure you have recently saw lot of fintechs companies lot of edtechs lot of product services companies basically got bankrupt because of breach and all that and and some are basically their their licenses got revoked because of the cyber security hygiene best practices and all that so as a role of a ciso here is to basically create a value for the board how we create a value we reduce the risk we increase the profit we increase the revenue we reduce the cost of solutions reduce the cost of breach so that is how we creating a value okay so ciso role to the board is to explain why security is important and ciso role to the operation team or security operation to explain them why business is important so that is how it basically shows the maturity and all that so that's something we need to understand so the third fact is only the large organization it's it's not true the organization which basically you can say uh with all size of companies basically face face threat it can be small it can be medium size so it is not necessary but yes some company does not have a budget so they will go for the virtual ciso so in that case virtual ciso is they basically appoint for one year and all that where they have a weekly calls and billing will be done based on number of calls okay so these are the three myths which i want to clear now who is ciso actually see ciso according to picture is not that old man ciso is basically part of a senior management team okay he is the one who basically part of a executive team he is the one who report to ceo cio or another senior executives because he want to share his view point about the security and uh, he definitely have a great extensive knowledge in multiple domains like application security identity management network security asset security so he definitely a security expert and they have extensive knowledge and experience in the information security and risk management but what i have seen in last 5 year you need to have a good business acumen so successful ciso you can say is the one who possesses strong business skills in addition to their technical expertise and this is basically include understanding the business operation financial management and effective communication with non technical stakeholder a good ciso is the one which explain to the board how security works and why security is important i'll give one basic example of that so let's say example i'm saying here is um, okay by this particular uh, so we have this kind of an attack can be occur on the organization or this kind of an attack will be happen on the data center okay but i will basically frame in different way i will say okay uh if cyber attack happen okay what is the impact on the organization so it basically change the thought process understood so on one side i'm saying cyber attack is going to be happen on the organization what is the impact but i am saying in this way if this critical services got impacted from cyber attack what is the impact so this is how we changing a thought process okay so that's why we say he is a part of a senior management team okay he should, he or she must have a good knowledge on cyber security okay um and definitely we don't have freshers so the one who basically moving to ciso profile he came came from a sock vapt or bug bounty and then he become a manager then he got the sense of business and then they made him ciso right and uh, the third the most important thing which i have seen in last 5 7 years is business acumen you should be good with reading financial reports you should be deal with cost budgeting you should be good with documentations you should be good with financial management i will ask you this way okay what is the best security solution 
तो समवन से ए बी सी समवन से बी सी डी समवन से चेक पॉइंट समवन से पॉल ऑल्टो बट बिजनेस एक्यूमेंट से दैट द सोल्यूशन विच मीट द बिजनेस रिक्वायरमेंट माइट बी पॉल ऑल्टो कैन बी ग्रेट बट इट इज़ नॉट नीड टू बी मीट द रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट इन विच यू आर ऑपरेटिंग सो यू नीड टू गो फॉर फोर्टी नेट आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एग्जाम्पल सो इफ यू थिंकिंग फ्रॉम अ टेक्निकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दिस पर्टिकुलर फायर वॉल इज अ ग्रेट बट इफ यू थिंकिंग फ्रॉम बिजनेस एक्यूमेंट परस्पेक्टिव यू हैव टू सी द how you balance the security versus functionality so that kind of a viewpoint is required right that's a thing see according to the sei cm edu they are basically a great university in terms of research and education in cyber security uh, i have taken the reference from there so if we talk about any company okay your company is basically organized into four functions okay the first function is protect shield defend and prevent that is the one second is basically called as a monitor hunt and detect third is basically called respond recover and sustain fourth is basically called govern manage comply educate and risk actually this is the first first we create this then we basically go for this then we basically do this then we do this so if you see the hierarchy this is basically called as a directive control okay then we have a preventive control then we basically have directive control and this is basically a corrective control so we have a domains like application security security operation center emergency operation incident management and program management office so you can see 60% of the ceo spend their time on this area because if your governance is not good you cannot able to drive this operational activity uh, i'm not going to discuss about what is governance because there is a dedicated video i made on governance please please do check that video i have explained governance from completely basic okay so if you see my description box of video uh, video i have already shared that url so when you talking about the department as i said just example they have taken is protect shield defend and protect it can be net network security and application security department who basically implement this then we have a security operation team who basically monitor the threat hunt the threat detect the threats then we also have another part of a security team who respond to the events recover sustain and then we have a program management office who govern manage comply and educate and manage the risk and what happen is they all are basically reporting to the ceo so ceo need to have a viewpoint okay if anyone come from a protect shield defend prevent so his viewpoint is all about managing configuration how to protect the organization so according to that you need to speak if the if the person is coming from soc soc architecture and all that so you have to understand their mindset of you know how they working how they detect analyze high level i'm not saying you need to be technical but you need to have a high level visibility that's why cssp kind of a program which cover all these domains now if someone is basically come from a bcp someone came from incident management okay how to convey things from the viewpoint of security business so you need to have a visibility then you are building a program you creating a strategy so that is basically part of a governance okay so this is this is how things works in the company this is how we map the ceso functions to the business okay now when you're talking about 2010 2020s the role of a ceso is more like a supporting digital transformations like we go for iot and we basically go for other digital technologies which expanding the attack surface so ceso has to manage the security in Uh, in your increasingly complex and hybrid environment then data privacy after gdpr and all that so here the ceo need to ensure you know they should be comply with the regulations and protect the sensitive data then we talk about the cyber resilience able to continue in the case of disaster so focus was shift from prevention to resilience it mean okay if incident occur there will be a failure but i don't want that failure i want to continue my operation so this is the shift was there from a cyber prevention to cyber resilience i repeat again in a prevention there will be a halt on the operation okay but i don't want now any halt even there's a halt happen in the operation but still i want to continue my operation so this is the shift we can see from 2005 to 2020 that we need to build the strategies or ceo need to build the strategies uh, in such a way to have a cyber resilience it can continue the services in the case of disaster okay so here the ceo uh, understood the breaches which is inevitable ceo give emphasis on the importance of incident response business continuity disaster recovery initially it was heading by the assurance team then now things have got changed lot of threats emerge in the industry so um, as a ceo you need to be leverage the advanced analytics and ai to predict and mitigate the threats then supply chain because lot of dependency was there on a third party so as a ceo you have to expand their focus to include the third party risk management and all that but now if you can see from 2020 to 2025 or 
the reads change, the, the things got changed. Now, as a CISO, you need to understand how AIML works, what is the threat we can see from AIML, how agent is basically creating a concerns, then zero trust architecture, how to deploy, what need to be included from business perspective. Lot of complex cybersecurity mesh is there, okay? Focus on human factor because human is the weakest link in the organizations. Okay, cloud security, uh, diversified regulatory landscape. You are not now limited to only one country. You have a multiple countries to be deal and the diversity inclusion. So your role will be more not technical only, but it is a combination of technical leadership skills. So all those things are basically right now demand as a CISO. Okay, so we'll discuss in detail all those things. Okay, so let's move to the next part. So now the call is basically what is the role of CISO in the organization? Is he implement ISO 27001, which is a myth? Um, is he the one who create a policy? No. It varies organization to organization and it also varies like what kind of a reporting structure you have. But I'm going to discuss about uh, what is a common role, what CISO hold, uh, you know, in the company. And this is a research I did from a multiple white papers and uh, in two projects where I was involved as a VCSO. One of the first important role of a CISO is to be involved in building governance. Okay, his first role is to build the security governance in the organization. So that is the most important part we have, which include developing a cyber security strategy, where you create a security strategy, which is aligned with the organization business goals and objectives. And when you're creating a cybersecurity strategy, it's not about only you need to have a good knowledge of security, but also you need to have a very good understanding of the business. We follow one principle uh, when we're talking about building cybersecurity strategies that meeting with the business, make a friendship with the business and make them happy with the uh, with the services, security services. So it's very important. You need to have very good meeting, good interaction with the business understand the pain point challenge and see how security can create a value and it is always we call it as a five-year strategy and three-year strategy depending upon the company your first primary role is to create a cyber security strategy in the organization second is your role will be act like a leadership and guidance you basically provide leadership to the cyber security team to ensure the alignment with the organization mission and vision that's the most important part so your role is more like an influencer your role is more influencer actually Sorry for my pronunciation. Your role will be more like influencers and get the task done because you need to show the value to the board. Okay. Then the third most important part is basically called as a resource management. Okay. You basically convince the board on the budget and all that. So you need to balance that particular resource. Resource can be my people, process and technology. So you need to be very good with the planning part. Okay. How much resource is required for a year? How much solutions we need to buy? So you need to manage and allocate resources to achieve the cybersecurity goal. And as you said, you are basically the communicator about the security to the board. So you regularly brief the board and executive management on cybersecurity postures, initiatives, risk, and it also involves the metrics. Okay, so that is basically the goal we have. Now, other important role when you're talking about in the, uh, you can say, in the CISO perspective is doing a risk assessment, not yourself, but get it done from the uh, the security analyst because security analyst is the one who report to the CISO. And if you're working for the small startup where you only have a 10 or 15 people and they have hired you as a VCSO, then you have to do that. So your risk assessment is depend upon different types. So we have a, what we called a context based risk assessment. One is basically called as a context based risk assessment let me change the diagram color yeah so one is basically called as a context based risk assessment and one is basically called as an asset based risk assessment because when you're starting any kind of a cyber security strategy in the organization we start with the risk assessment first because that give me the idea about the gaps threats and vulnerability so your role is to identify evaluate prioritize the risk Okay, then you do you deal with the risk treatment, you prepare the entire risk treatment approach that okay, this is the mitigation, this is the avoidance, this is the acceptance. Now it is a call of the customer how they want to. So your, your role is to basically here involved in uh, preparing a mitigation strategy, then risk reporting where you involved in building KRI, KPI, 
and providing an effective matrix which is mapped with the business level and if the company involved in third party and all that you will evaluate the vendor your role will be like an advisor to the customer like okay we can go for this vendor we can go for that vendor then you evaluate the risk uh, of the vendor or otherwise you have a team person you will get it done this task from the respective person as i said depending upon the company so in some small companies iso does all these things on the big companies it is basically delegate to the assurance team and all that okay now another important role as i said is called as a regulatory in compliance so as a ciso you need to have a meeting with the chief legal officers to ensure you basically comply with the you can say uh legal regulatory requirement like let's say example you are planning to start a new business in europe and now you need to be interpret the gdpr requirement and see how your business can be comply with gdpr glba in us so they have their own security control requirement you know these are the security requirement must be there in your company so as a as a ciso you to you need to build the compliance framework you need to ensure compliance with the re- re- relevant regulations and standards and you need to develop the policy around how to meet the regulatory compliance now here my suggestion is what i did uh, for my customer is i simply create one table okay in that table what i did here is on the on the this side i mention about the regulations like gdpr uh, glba sox and the third is basically hipaa and then i on the this side i basically talking about the common controls which is unique in all the regulations and then i basically document the unique articles which is there in every regulation and then i map with the csf framework so that is how i basically created a uh, one control matrix document which is also called as a uh, regulatory matrix table by which is easy for me to manage the regulation of a different business or different companies because as a vc so you work with multiple companies right so every time it is not possible for you to create this kind of a table one example is glba gdpr hipaa and uh, sox has a requirement is you need to have a information security program so that become a common control or gdpr basically have a requirement that okay you need to anonymize the data so according to that we have a unique control understood so this is how we are referring the parameters and according to that we build the framework then you should be involved in audit management see your role is not to do the audit because it's a conflict of interest you need to prepare the company for external audit like isms 27001 okay soc 2 okay now i have seen a lot of companies where they have expectation the ciso will implement isms in the organization i agree he is accountable for implementing the isms 27001 in the organization i agree with that he is the one who responsible or she is the one who responsible or accountable for implementing but on practical he will or she will has to get it done with the some security consultant team if budget is a issue then he has to because it itself is a very big task six months task so you should be clear with either you basically involved as a leadership position where you get the work done of multiple thing on the same time or you will basically act like a implementer where you do itself all this activity parallelly but uh, we have to understand the uh, concern here in india the customer was expecting from a ciso to implement the isms 27001 in the organization so i highly recommend those who are watching this video and you want to become a ciso you need to learn how to implement 27001 in the organization exactly so there's a video i made with kavita the video i made with rahul sir you can check the video where we have discussed practical way of how to do the audit so as a ciso you should prepare your company for bcdss audit external audit you should prepare your company for isms audits regulatory audit and all that another important thing is that you need you need to be involved in building the governance framework which is starting with the information security charter information security charter talk about what is the role we have in the company who does what from a security point of view so that is a role we covered in the governance framework where you establish the governance framework for cyber security including the roles responsibilities and everything then nowadays what i have seen the ciso also spent 20 to 25% of the time in the soc area because this is something is your dynamic in nature so you will be sit with the security analyst where you develop and maintain the incident response plan and uh, whenever any incident become a very critical incident we need to notify to the customer how to notify what is a way to present that particular notification report and all that there will be a role of a ciso here exactly 
and along with that he was he is the one who or she is the one who basically sometimes lead the response to the security incidents where you need to coordinate with the internal team external partner and ensure the incidents are basically contained within a defined slas also you will be involved as a ceo in post incident review meetings okay annually or six months meetings where you can basically understand how to improve the sops and all that and how to communicate the stakeholders during and after incident so that is the active role of ceo but as i said in last five years things got changed and now the ceo also involved in security architecture and operations especially when you work for the product companies exactly when you work for the product companies they have one domain which is called a security architect where you're involved in security by design principle so as a ceo now you need to be have a very good visibility about how economy of mechanism basically works and how the keep it simple concept works how the uh, privacy by design works okay so now company has decided they want to go for a solution so your active involvement will be there in selection of the solution your active involvement will, will be there in uh, documenting a functional requirement of a solution you will be the one who actively involved in building the rfp and everything so that is the role of a security technology oversight okay now uh, the company is implementing a vulnerability management program is it comply with the sop is it comply with the cyber security strategy is it working effectively so you will collect the matrix report which is part of a vulnerability management then we also have a network security and application security uh, network security is basically ensure security of the organization network infrastructure including a network segmentations access controls monitoring uh, how the network architect has been defined what is the placement of firewalls what is the placement of dlp because this placement also drive the cost there's no we don't have a budget i'll give an example recently what happened company has re reached out to me and say prab we are building a network security for an organization we are confused about the firewall effectiveness and dlp effectiveness i told them endpoint dlp will be there in every host and network based dlp required in the border of the network now it is not possible that okay we can have a budget for installing the endpoint dlp in every host so we optimize the asset security we introduce a micro segmentation and by that instead of buying a 17 license we bought only 10 license because we move the rest of the host in the vlan segmentation so you need to have a very good visibility of network security if you are in the era of 2024 and 2025 because as the zero trust is coming as the hyper workforce we have so micro segmentation is basically playing a very important role then as i said application security is a new important thing where sometime you act like a security champion where you guide you will oversight the security application development team and uh, you basically having a meeting with the customer on a regular basis to understand about the security parameters and everything which is required in the applications so that is basically part of application security okay as we have seen in last 5 more 5 years there's a new pattern is also there who is the weakest link in the, in the organization i said people we have a assets we called as a crown jewels we have a technology which is protect that particular assets but the most important thing we forget is give attention to the employees make them aware about security awareness make them aware about what is their importance what is their role in the organization from security awareness point of view and this is what i have seen in last 5 year the ceo spending great amount of time after in soc and appsec in the security awareness training because they know very well if you have a great solution in the market uh, it cannot predict any human behavior so it's very important we need to improve the human behavior we need to make them aware about their responsibility toward the organization so now as a ceo he involved or she involved actively in developing and implementing a security awareness program to educate employees they involve the vendors they actively involved in selection of vendors who can provide them gamifications they actively review they have a monthly meetings iso have a monthly meetings on security awareness training status increase in the incident report decrease in a security violations uh, how many so uh, if we done the phishing test how many employee click on the phishing test uh, pass or fail so you know they they promote the culture of the security within the organization and it's a humble request is whenever you go for any iso jobs and all that interviewer the first question is basically how you create a security culture in the company okay and that's not something you build from the technical knowledge and all that so in order to promote the culture of security within the organization 
you need to encourage employer to take the ownership how you basically take the ownership how you take the culture how you validate the culture is basically the most important part we have that we need to understand so culture basically play a very important role and when you preparing for any interview please 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 study on culture part because culture is an important part okay how to build culture what are the parameter and i'm making a one dedicated video on the same okay okay so next part is basically collaboration communication so i have seen lot of people you know ignore this area it's a very important area actually you need to work closely not with only security but you have to work closely with the other departments like id department hr departments because you want to integrate information security into the business process right so you need to have a very good terms with them and you also need to maintain some kind of a building maintain relationship with the external partners vendors okay that for that you need to join some ciso groups participate in the information sharing collaboration efforts and also need to communicate the security initiatives you know policies issues to the stakeholders and the most part is basically called as a metrics and reporting see role of ciso is to basically provide the visibility about the security effectiveness so metrics reporting is very important continuous improvement is very important for that whatever the meeting need to be done it is there so summary is that you know when you talking about the ciso acha one more important part here is uh, what i have seen post covid is business continuity and disaster recovery for in that also i am keeping this as a separate slide because now ciso is closely work with the assurance team where he involved in developing a business continuity plan okay he share or she share their view point on bcp drills and how to handle the crisis lead the crisis management with the assurance team that is basically role of a ciso so summary is basically here is uh, ciso role is a very diverse okay it required top down approach starting from strategic leadership technical expertise risk management that's the most important part we have second is you need to have a both proactive and reactive approach so job involved proactive measure like involved in policy development risk assessment reactive is basically if incident occur how you respond to the incident that is part of a reactive and the third part is basically called as a collaboration which is a very crucial so effective cyber security required a collaboration across the organization with external partners and uh, because security cannot be only implemented with the help of internal people so we we need to have external parties and all that and you need to upgrade and update your knowledge also okay so i will sharing one video in which i'm going to discuss about the five six books which cisa should review and do share in comment box shall i made a video on the same so continuous learning is very important like as you see now chat gpt is there ai gen is there ai ml is there cloud is there it was not there 10 years back come on you cannot sustain things based on older technologies so as a ciso you need to be evolved around new th- new topics and all that so that's the thing so in my next video i am going to discuss about the skill set is which is required to become a better ciso and do let me know in the comment box how do you find this particular master class and do you find this content is different from other what you have saw and your comments your feedbacks is really play a very important role because i basically compromise my weekend to build a content like that to building a future gladiators so it's a humble request do let me know how do you find this video which help me to improve my content and i can see that some of the folks have not subscribed to my channel do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic good day bye